Can I start by, on behalf of my party, expressing our sorrow at the lives that have tragically been lost and extending our deepest sympathies to those, their families and friends and to those who are currently ill and recovering in hospital. It's never easy to lose a loved one, but especially not in these circumstances or at these times. And I echo the uh, Secretary of State's comments regarding our gratitude to those who served and who showed great courage and who will continue to prosecute and investigate. Can I first of all call for a calm response, which I think, to be fair, the uh, Secretary of State has made clear. We have sadly had previous terrorist atrocities. It's a product of our time. We don't expect and shouldn't have to live with it, but we do have to recognise that they do occur. And what we have to recognise is we do have to show calm judgement, not make a rush to an analysis or indeed make a decision without knowing the full facts. And that has obviously been commented upon yourself regarding it being sub judice. There may very well be mental health or other aspects that we don't know. We await the outcome of an investigation. But what we can be clear about and what I would seek to be, again, have the Secretary of State's reassurance that we make it quite clear that terrorist acts are not perpetrated by communities. They are carried out by individuals. They do not recommend, represent any faith, constituency, or indeed cause other than their own misguided and indeed malevolent and wicked views. And we need to take that into account. And we also need to remember that although we have suffered not just this recent tragedy, but all too recent ones, including members very close to this house, uh, what some people basically view as the epicenter of the areas that perpetrate terrorism, actually suffer far more from it than we do in our uh, entire history, and we need to take that into account. So on that issue, I would like to ask and seek the reassurance from the Secretary of State that steps will be taken to ensure that reassurance and protection is given to minority communities, because I do know from my own experience in Scotland that there can be those who will rush to judgment and seek to apportion blame and will through misguided views or indeed their prejudice and dogma uh, seek to carry out attacks against minority groups and therefore would ask that that steps, which I no doubt are probably ongoing, are in fact carried out, but equally seek some reassurance that as well as contest, we will also seek to prevent that at the end of the day, we do need to not only protect our minority communities, we need to deal with issues that are bubbling under the surface there. So as well as contesting terrorism and confronting it quite rightly, we need to protect communities and address injustice wherever it is. The Honourable Gentleman is absolutely right in terms of ensuring that Communities not vilified at this particular time, um, and minority groups in particular and communities. This is actually a moment where we should all be coming together to be supportive across all communities and in particular, um, as I discussed um, earlier on this morning with the Honourable Member for Reading East as well, um, communities locally, multi-faith groups. So there is so much more work that obviously needs to take place, but there is great work taking place and we should not lose sight of that right now.